The first part of my kit is just the normal throwaway hygiene stuff, just in case the patient doesn't have uh, the things we need to start therapy on ADLs. Um, I also got a pack of combs, shout out to Cameron, because uh, they looked like a really good item to have in the kit. Um, I liked her idea of also using it in other areas to work on um, different fine motor grasps um, to do wrapping things and uh, working at midline and crossing midline. I also came up with another one uh, where we could look, work on lateral pinch and stand up some of these combs and have the person put um, popsicle sticks through the teeth uh, or even to hold straws and have them uh, push the straws down into the comb uh, that's standing up in therapy dough. So uh, the combs at least have a couple of other uses um, besides the ones that they're meant for. Some other items in my kit are for modifying the environment or modifying uh, the tools that the client needs to use to complete an activity. Um, I've got some Dysum, I have some stick-on foam that can be cut to different lengths. Um, I have some diameter tubing that they can use. I also found these um, bendy hair ties that could be used to make a universal cuff or to wrap around something and increase the diameter of it. Um, anything necessary to help the client perform the activities that they want to do and the occupations that they're used to doing um, and helping them to achieve them. Okay, the basic safety parts of my kit include the gate belt, the CPR mask, uh, nitrile gloves, a multi-tool, um, just in case I need to fix something um, or work on something for the client, a uh, flashlight, antibacterial wipes, um, I have a measuring tape that can be used um, uh, in therapy for the client to measure things or to measure edema on the client or as a lacing uh, item. I have a stethoscope and I also have a pulse oximeter. I've also included a small notebook, uh, more antibacterial wipes for wiping down surfaces, of course my goniometers. Um, I have a one pound weight to work on preparatory activities. Um, it can also be used uh, for rolling. Um, I've got uh, my therapy band. It comes in a loop, so I could use it for gross motor activities, having the client step in and out. Um, I have the squeeze ball to help on strength or maybe emotion regulation. And I also have the shoehorn. Uh, which can be used for shoes and self-care. Uh, we can also use it uh, for reaching over, doing some lateral bending and uh, writing reactions and things while they reach down and, and move things around on the ground. And um, I have therapy band. It's really long, uh, so they can use it as a band for preparatory activities and exercises. Um, I could also use it for stringing objects or uh, with the clips to have the patient hang things up um, and work on upper body range of motion. These are some of the items that I can use uh, for uh, balance and gross motor therapies. Um, I could work on motor coordination and control, uh, motor planning and praxis, Postural stability, proprioception, rotary and linear movements, bilateral coordination and integration, uh, body awareness in space, kinesthesia, uh, equilibrium and writing reactions, and also coordination of large muscle groups. Um, some of the things that I can do with these items would be uh, to use the cones, of course, as obstacles. I could also thread the cones onto something like therapy band and then stretch the therapy band out across the room and have them walk along it and try to move the cone along it. Um, I could string this onto the TheraBand also. Um, large movements where they have to uh, reach up and clip things onto the therapy band. I also have different kinds of string that they can do the same thing with. Um, this here is uh, a finger ladder. Um, I could tack it up onto the wall and have them uh, increase their upper extremity range of motion and walk their fingers up higher and higher. 
um, just to get that extra motion in the shoulders. Um, I can have them reach across the table to get cards or to get small objects and uh, to help them do that extra last little bit of reach they can even use this to try and grab the objects and pull them towards themselves. Uh, the next few groups of items um, are going to be great for working on different fine motor skills. Uh, we can work on depth perception with the client also, um, eye-hand coordination, uh, grasp and release patterns, three-jaw chuck, lateral and pinch grips, motor praxis coordination, and uh, control of the small muscle groups. And um, all this is important for the client to be able to manipul manipulate items in their environment um, and also to take care of ADLs, but also IADLs. The items I have right now um, is just a sampling of some of the small items that can be used for in-hand manipulation or for picking up and placing. We can use the different tongs and pinchers um, to pick things up and increase strength. Um, I have this container that they can put items in, but they can also use it as a finger ladder. As I said before, it could be placed up on the wall. Um, this item here we can use the rubber bands and we can place it around the pegs um, and increase strength that way and also coordination and control. Um, and then of course they can use it to fill up the slots. We've got some Play-Doh um, and we also have uh, a lock here. We can work on some lateral grip and uh, twisting and I can put this item on a lot of the other items in the kit. Um, and then the cones, again, the grasp and release patterns, uh, setting things up. You could also have the client pick things up and drop them into the cones. Uh, clients can also place a number of items into the cones. Um, can also have them wrap stuff around the cones. Um, you can also have them thread the lacing through the ends of some of the straws. Uh, even these bendy things that I used earlier for modifying the environment, they can be used for uh, picking up. can have them put rubber bands around the cones. Now these are a couple of the card games that I'm including. Um, obviously, you could actually play the card games um, or you can use them for other aspects in therapy. Uh, this year is just crazy ace, but you can use it for matching, you can make a memory game out of it, you can um, do color recognition and things like that. Uh, this is an I Spy game. Uh, hopefully the clients would forgive me that it's kind of a Disney theme, maybe feel a little nostalgic. Um, but I played this with the kids a couple of times and it was actually really difficult because there's just so much going on in the picture. It's so busy and I really had to search for things. Um, this one would be Definitely good for working on um, matching and memory, but also form constancy, uh, finger ground perception, and visual perception and acuity. Um, over here we just have the Scrabble Slam game. Uh, it's a card game with letters, which uh, they can build words with, uh, they can copy the letters with. The game itself has you kind of change a few letters and make them rhyme. Um, we all know what we can do with the regular cards. And I'm also including um, a card holder. This is another set of my basic stuff. Um, I have poster tack. It's really sticky. It can be used to hang up almost anything up on the walls and it should come down without messing up anybody's paint job. Um, you could use this uh, to hold things up right on the table also, such as those combs I talked about earlier. Um, I've got some index cards because they're thicker. They're easier for the client maybe to manipulate or cut uh, colored pencils and some twistable crayons because nobody likes really short crayons anyway. Uh, I got some glue and some different types of tape. Um, this one's a medical tape but it, it kind of comes off of things really easily. Got a little duct tape, a little masking tape. Uh, I can use that to have the client hang stuff up. I can um, make marks on the ground uh, for gross motor. Um, I have pens and pencils of various kinds, uh, pencil grips, 
Um, I also made money. I laminated it. It's only good on one side, but that can be used for cognitive things as well as sorting and counting. Um, and then also a magnifying glass, uh, which I kind of really needed when I was playing that card game earlier. Uh, in this part of the kit, I've got, uh, of course, my sewing kit. Um, I kind of flushed it out with items that could be used to make uh, bookmarks or do a little bit of cross stitching or just simple, um, simple stitching and manipulation of uh, a needle. Uh, I have smaller beads um, that can be put onto strings like this or uh, if the patient needs to have it graded down they can um, kind of thread it onto a paper clip. I have scraps of cloth that they can also work on sewing and manipulation. Um, right here I have a hook and loop material and um, this is so that we can modify the patient's clothes if we need to. If they're having problems with buttons then we can go ahead and snip off a piece and sew it onto their shirt right away. Um, sew their buttons together and then have their their shirt or their pants kind of velcro together. Um, and this uh, thing here we can use for um, hanging things on with the clips. We can wrap things around and through. Um, I've got different kinds of laces and threads and things like that that the patient can use. I also have different sets of books and coloring things as well as cards and postcards. Um, this can work on the fine motor uh, issues and um, endurance and things that are needed uh, for writing but they can also be used for modulation of emotions and reactions uh, for self-regulation. Um, this can help with some sensory motor skills and sensory integration and processing, um, orientation and attention, also tracking and visual motor integration. Um, as well as some visual spatial processing. Um, this is just a scratch it kit. We got the crosswords and everything like that. Um, if the patient's having a lot of trouble, then we can forgo writing a whole letter and maybe they would prefer to just write a postcard. It's something really small. Maybe they'll get satisfaction just out of being able to complete the address. Um, and the adult coloring book, I'm not crazy about the ones that are just mandalas and really tiny figures. Um, this one has actual grayscale pictures and you can photocopy these, you can have them color, uh, you can have them um, tell you something about it, work on cognitive skills. Uh, some of them you could even turn into one of those paint by number pictures and you could put your numbers on it and what you want to have them color so that they can work on following directions and uh, number and pattern recognition and things like that. Last item in the kit is a set of geometric puzzles. Obviously you can do the puzzles with the person. I have a harder set and an easier set so you can grade up or down. Um, you can use the shapes for color recognition, pattern making, stacking. Um, all the items in this kit uh, can be used in more ways than I've shown you on the video and obviously everything would need to be geared towards uh, working on an actual ADL, IADL, or some other occupation that the patient has pointed out as something that they want to do better, that they want to be able to um, rehab and, and reachieve doing. Um, I have items in here to address cognitive issues, self-care, gross motor skills, sensory issues, fine motor skills, and balance issues. Um, and I think it's a really well-rounded kit. So, and I hope you enjoy looking at some of the things that I've included in my kit. I hope it gives you some good ideas of what you can include in yours uh, next OTA class. And uh, thanks for looking through my kit.